how Anthony Ginting must rue the fact that he had an eight-point advantage in that opening game and let it slip. But what a thriller it was. Congratulations to Wang Chalong, who quite simply played brilliantly. Well, we've got plenty more action to come. And uh, next up, after that thrilling men's singles, we have a mixed doubles. And we have the two-time defending champion, Tuntoi Akman, with his new partner, Winnie Octavina Kandau. And they're up against surprise opponents, I have to say. Nipipon Puan Puapet and Sawatri Amatrapai, who beat their compatriots and number four seeds yesterday in a three-game thriller. After that, we'll have men's singles, more home interest then, and we'll have men's doubles. And uh, that features the defending champions, Gideon and Sukamolio. Then we'll have women's singles and uh, Pusala Venkatas Sindhu. So plenty more action to come. But when we look at the mixed doubles draw in uh, this uh, section of the draw, this is the bottom half of the draw. And as you can see, uh, this is the last match to decide the quarterfinal spot in the bottom half. And the winner of the match we are about to watch will play against last year's beaten finalists. The number five seeds, Cha Peng Soon and Go Liu Ying, who also happened to have won the Olympic silver medal in Rio de Janeiro. So, as far as the mixed doubles is concerned, well, I was telling you yesterday that Tontoi Akman is the only former champion who started in this year's mixed doubles draw. Former champions in all the other draws and in the doubles draws, former pairs who have won the title before. But, uh, Steen, I know you must be exhausted after that thrilling <laughs> men's singles match, but weren't you impressed yesterday with these two? I thought they played terrifically well. Yeah, they did, and um, I think they must be uh, all fired up now here because I think uh, it was not the opponents that they counted on playing today, the ones arriving in the stadium here, Amitra Pai and uh, Huang Pua Pet. So uh, I think they feel they have a chance of um, qualifying for the quarterfinals. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it's a very open match, but I have to say these two, well, they must have played well yesterday to beat the number four seeds, Di Chapong Pua Nukro and Sapsari Tehrat Tanachai, especially coming from a game down. So a great performance by this pair from Thailand. As our court officials await the arrival of the players, this will be just the second meeting between these two pairs. The only time they met previously was in the Tong Yang Kai Cup, the Asia Mixed Team Championships in Hong Kong and it was won by the Indonesians very convincingly not only was the score 15 and 11 uh, they won that encounter in Hong Kong in just 26 minutes so the man who's been in four finals here at his home events winning two of them with Liliana Nasia, who's now retired. Reigning Olympic champion, two-time world champion. Really not a lost else for him to achieve in world badminton. World number one with his former partner. And born in uh, Banyumas in southwest of central Java. Now he's 31 years of age. I've got him down as 31 and thir turning 32 tomorrow. Sorry. No, I haven't. I've got that completely wrong. It's his birthday today. Yesterday I said he was turning 32 tomorrow. Pay uh. attention, Jill. Happy birthday, young man. So to his partner, who is just 20. I know I've got that one right. Uh, born in uh, Lihasana in North Sulawesi. Not the tallest of athletes, 164, that's five foot four and a half. And she and her partner formed their partnership at the 
German Open Super 300 event earlier this year. Had a great start, actually, to their partnership. Four quarterfinals in their first five tournaments together. Yesterday, they were impressive against Ranki Reddy and Honopa. Just 28 minutes for that. But it has to be said that Ranki Reddy and Ponopo, it was only their second tournament of the year following on from injury for Ranky Reddy. So to Nipipon Puang Puapets, who is 28 years of age, born in the Thai capital of Bangkok. He and his partner enjoying their 12th consecutive week at a career high of 15 in the world ranking. Sawadri Amatrapai is 30 years of age, also born in the Thai capital. And they're making their first appearance as a pair at the Indonesian Open. They were actually entered last year, but withdrew from the tournament. And as far as uh, their first round is concerned, this will confirm what I was telling you a moment ago, that they beat the number four seeds. Japan Puavar and Nukro and Sapsari Teurat Tanachai. Having lost the first game to 13, then probably won 19 and 19 in a match just one minute shy of the hour mark. So our umpire for this one, Remy Bouluia uh, from Canada, Kelly Hall from Australia, is our service judge for this one. Well, it's interesting, Steve, that both the Thai players have played in quarter-finals here at the Indonesian Open, but in level doubles. Huang Puapet reached the quarter-final seven years ago, playing with uh, Patipat Charlotte Chalam. And Amitrapai, even before that, nine years ago, was in the quarter-final of the women's doubles with Unkit. Enjoyed success here. They must have been playing in these conditions and the windy conditions many times yes. before, but their first appearance as a pair. But we think the, the drift is different this year. So uh, that blows my theory. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. on my right, uh, just, I, I think the, way, the drift is not as severe alongside the court as normal, but it's still left. there. The drift from left to right is very severe. But I think the most important thing is that the, the shuttles, I feel, are slower than last year. And I just checked the match time for the first two days, the first round match times this year compared to last year. And there's an average difference of five minutes per match. Longer or shorter? They're longer this year. Five minutes longer than last year. Well, the that first round. So that sort of indicates that um, the shuttles are indeed uh, slower and there's more rallies late. Interesting. Yeah, very good start by the Indonesians. Three, love. I suppose there is a theory, so, Steen, that uh, the worse the drift, the more likely to go to three games, and therefore last year, with the drift being worse, we would have thought that perhaps there was more three-game matches. Yes. Uh, I haven't checked up on the three-game matches, Love. but uh, the theory would be that there's more three-game matches, but also um, quicker three-game matches than in normally uh, slow conditions. Yeah, good point. Five, low. Wow, well, we said they were playing well last year. I should say yesterday. Six, love. Hardly blinked, and it's six, love. According to the giant scoreboard, only one minute into the match. Yeah. Service over. One, six. Nice work from Amitrapai. Two, 
six. Oh, what an angle. My goodness me. Service over. Seven, two. I always thought that was something with Tuntui Ahmad that was underestimated in his wonderful partnership with Liliana Nasir because I know that you and I were huge fans of Liliana Nasir yeah. and she was so good at the front of the court that we over. forgot to recognise how good Ahmad seven. was at the back and it wasn't the power of his smashes it was the placement and angles that yeah, were so the good. Angle, the, the steepness is really really important you can think back of um, player like Fu Hai Fong in yeah. men's doubles, he, he had a hard smash, but he had a hard steep smash, and that's what made it um, so dangerous to opponents. The same was the case for Joachim Fischer uh, from Denmark as well. And I think especially the last two years, pretty much after the Olympics, where here is Liliana Nasir. Yeah. Um, the last two years they played Ahmad and, and Nasir, they still produced good results, and I think um, also his tactical awareness was tested those two years because a lot of it was about protecting uh, Liliana Nasir from being too exposed due to her uh, knee uh, uh, problems. Nine, yeah. three. That's delightful. Well worked. Ten, three. To the mid-game interval, three in the, the Indonesians win an eight-point advantage. Only four minutes into the match. Extraordinary. By the Thailand coach, Sarah Lee Untung Kam. So here's a testing question then. What year did she one, win one, one the second. Indonesian Open mixed doubles with Sukit Prakabong? Unseeded they were. Unseeded. And they beat Tuntoy Ahmad and Liliana Nasir in the final. And that narrows it down a little bit because then Vidyanto, Noah Vidyanto had definitely stopped. They've started playing. Uh, my initial guess would be 10, but uh, I'll um, go up to 12. Oh, I'm buying the teas tonight. <laughs> well done, Three. Steve. Spot Five. on. 2012. Service over. I feel redeemed from yesterday. <laughs> Four, 11. Oh, I, I might just pop another quiz question later on. Yeah, I feared that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope Sarah Lee has uh, alerted Kwang uh, Kua Pet and Amitra Pai to the fact that we have started the match here. They've really been uh, run over by the Indonesians. But it could be consistent to yesterday where it also seems that they didn't start too well against their compatriots. It was quite late on last night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, First round mixed doubles match. Oh, that's down the line. What a super shot, perhaps helped a little bit by the sideways drift. 14, four. Yeah, badly deflected by the net court. And it worked to her advantage. Great 
great awareness. Oh, it's a toy up one. He's just pulling them out of position at the moment. Totally. Eleven point advantage. Oh, that's nice. Service over. One Five, suspects 15. that this opening game is beyond the tie pair, but I also feel, Steen, that they really need to get themselves into the match, in, play themselves in, so they have a bit of uh, belief for the second game. Yeah, exactly, and uh, also find some way to cope with this side of the court here, because if they are going to win the match, it seems like they have to play this near side one more time. 16, uh, in a best case scenario for them, so uh, we've got to come up with something. Service over. Six, sixteen. That's a good defense. Well judged, just long. Seven, sixteen. How do you play yourself into a match, Steam, when obviously at the moment they're way off the pace? Or it's, it's difficult. The first thing is you hope that your opponent slows down a little bit so you can um, so you can score some points. But also um, you have to try out different things. If, if what you've been doing so far isn't working, then you cannot continue. Get, over. You can for a little while continue Seven to try feet. and do the same and do Seven. it a little bit better. If it still not works, then you have to try other things. Uh, maybe even uh, uh, try something that is not within your key competence, but maybe it's enough because it's also not the opponent's key competence. And you definitely want to get some ideas, and uh, that's the reason for trying out a lot of different things. If you don't try things, Eight, you don't 17. find anything that's going to work. Yeah. Play. 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 Tell you, um, I was asking the umpire if he could go and towel down, and umpire only up, saying no. Service over, 18, 8. Oh, that's lovely. That's a nice shot from Puan Puapet. Service Great over. Reception. Yeah. Nine, 18. Service over. Well, it's a nice 19, return of serve, nine. but quite simply, I think the ties have got to sort out who's really going for that. They're going, both are going for it, or at least uh, Amit Rapa is going for it, but it's not going 100%, and that sort of tricks Frank Rapet, so he doesn't get to it either. But they, I mean, to me, it was a so big surprise they beat um, Hechapon and um, Chanatai yesterday. There's nothing in the results earlier this year that indicates uh, that they should be um, in good shape, perhaps except from Asia Championships where they lost in in two close games against um, uh, Watanabe and, uh, and Higashino. Otherwise, they haven't really uh, impressed so far this year. Well left. Just why? Yeah, and to emphasize that point, they actually started 19. the year, their very first tournament, Thailand Masters, home soil, Super 300 event. They actually reached the semi-final losing to the pair they beat yesterday and since then they've had six 
first or second round losses. They have had a couple of quarterfinals as well, but I mean, there's nothing really uh, against the very top pairs, as exactly. you say. And, and Dechipon and, and Tira Chanacha, they're well, a top pair, they are right, a top yeah. four yeah. in the world. They've earned their fourth seeding here, but it, it's a different complexity mm. when it's against players from the same nation. Yeah. They know each other, they know what buttons to push, and there's no coaching and stuff like that, so yeah, it's more unpredictable. But I think definitely they've played themselves a little bit into this uh, first game here. At least the scoreline is respectable now. Oh, lucky neck. Oh, oh, don't believe it. What a rally. the tie side of the court. But oh my so goodness me, what an exchange at the front of the court. We're That's seeing the final point. shot, but the well. interesting part of the rally was in the early stages. There it is. Here it is. Extraordinary. Game point opportunities, though, for the Indonesian pair. Service to turn. Service over. 13, 20. That's gone wide. 14, 20. Game. Opening game to the two First time defending champion. Toy and his new partner winning. 21, 14. Can doubt a 20 year old who has played with maturity so far. Sahara Lee. Yeah. I don't know what the thinking is in the uh, Thai camp, but I, one, I recall seconds. a number of times one, as seconds. Denmark national coach when we had There's two players playing each other. It didn't happen that often. Yeah. But two players or two pairs playing each other. Um, very often, uh, the result came out um, as a surprise because the favourites felt the um, magnitude of the match and uh, don't want to lose to your teammates. But it happened often yeah. anyway. So, whereas from a coaching perspective, if I could have selected the player pair with the best chance of progressing Quite. further in the tournament, I might have actually selected the losing player pair in, uh, in that situation. Yeah. Service over. Uh, we One. don't know how it goes Love. here, but but on paper, before 
the tournament, I would have given Dechipon and uh, Chanachai a bigger chance of beating uh, Ahmad and Kando than Gopet and uh, Nitro. Two, Bryan. yeah, Love. I agree totally. Very interesting scenario. Over. I hardly One, touched it. Three. Way three. long of the back line. There is definitely a drift alongside the court. And we've also seen in some of the previous matches that the sideways drift suddenly um, uh, becomes more severe. So that's also what makes it difficult Two, here in this class. Three. Moment, that it, it's not totally constant, the, um, the weather report, so to speak. <laughs> Luckily, we've avoided rain so far, though. <laughs> it's been light. Wow, that's good work. Very Ooh, good work. Challenge. Wow. Now I saw that, was it? Yeah, but I think it's worth a challenge. I, it, it might have been in. I still think it's worth having a look. And Atma thinks that they touched the shuttle anyway. So we await for Hawkeye's decision. What does Hawkeye say? Yeah. That's it. Clearly. A challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Three all play. Oh, totally this time that. Service is over. Four, three. Well, another one goes Service way, over. way long. Four, all. Oh. the Thai pair failed to control the drift. Of course, Six, uh, four. something that can easily play on your mind when you miss by such a big margin. Makes you a little bit uh, uncertain in the conditions. Help settle the nerves there as far as the time pair are concerned. Six. That's great skill. That's the Seven. tactical awareness Five. you were talking about earlier. Quickly picking up on uh, where the gaps might be. Eight, five. Nice shot. Yeah, set up the whole rally. 
Service over. A little hold and flick Six, from Amitrapai. Quick. So as the players go off for a quick towel down, here's my fun fact of the day. Steen. Yep. This is the 38th Indonesian Open. So of the 37 previous, 82 titles in total have been won by home players. That's 44% of all titles won by Indonesian players. But since the inception of the Super Series in 2007, home players have only won seven titles. Seven. Yeah, that eight. makes sense. But it also shows that the uh, sort of um, power balance in badminton um, is not as it was no. uh, years ago, 15 years ago or so, where uh, Nisha has had a, a period after Taufik Hidayat played in his career, and when he stopped, they haven't seven. been that dominant in men's singles. Uh, the women's categories, um, I guess, Participation has been stronger from China and, uh, and Korea, especially. But um, what do you it's mean? Still remarkable. It's still remarkable, but but you said you. it makes sense, and you've sort of explained it. But it's not just the balance of power. I think that since the inception of the Super Series, where the Everybody top played. players yeah. all come to these events, it's made a difference, yes. and, and it's made all these what was Super Series tournaments, and now World Tour, very strong events, and that's wonderful for badminton. It is, and, and uh, it's much more, it gives a much more accurate picture. The world ranking gives a much more accurate picture of Service over. Uh, who is actually playing Eight. well. Nine. Uh, yeah. You could say that in order to make it even more accurate, you should weigh in um, recent results even more, but it's still a much more accurate picture now that all players are playing many tournaments. I remember back in the days when, for instance, Kim Dong Moon only played four open tournaments in a year and then some championships that he won all of them. Yeah. But, I mean, Service uh, over. That, that meant that a lot of other players Eight. got a chance to win tournaments since he wasn't there and it gave them an unreal high. Uh, yeah. That's a great return of serve. She's got nice skills, hasn't she? I think she's stepped up here in the Nine. second game, playing Nine. really well from the backcourt also. Um, speciality, perhaps, for, for Thailand mixed up players that uh, are actually uh, quite willing to play in the uh, opposite Service positions over. of the normal Eleven. mixed double. Interval. Well, they had an eight-point advantage at the mid-game interval in the opening game here in the second game. Indonesian pair, only a two-point advantage. But an advantage is an advantage. Not only on the scoreboard, but psychologically as well. Over Woody Anto. This title, back in 2005. Court one, 20 seconds. Court one, 20 seconds. Both of you, both of you, both of you, both of sure I agree with you on your point about most recent. Oh, she's enjoying the badminton. No pressure on her now to no. just sit back and Liliana Nasir and enjoy the spectacle. I'm not sure about recent results carrying more weight. I think we'd have more accurate world ranking if you included more tournaments than just your best 10. But we'll discuss that well, over our cup of tea yeah. that I'm going to buy you tonight. Possibility. Definitely. Yeah, that's good. And they need Service to keep it close, over. don't they? Score line. Yeah. Ten, twelve.
Well judged. Just long. Service over. 13. 10. I thought she touched it. He touched it. Wasn't it? Service over. Eleven fourteen. that they're well, trying to um, play the front court trying to keep the shuttle downwards on to a pit and into a pipe taken by the side of the service over 15 12 Definitely got a good touch uh, Service over. from Corpet. 13, 15. Thank you. Players on court. Oh, all right. Fourteen, fifteen. Pressure now on the Indonesians. with uh, Frank Pet and Amit Rapai. I actually think it serves them really well when they're taking uh, big breaks in between the rallies. So level in this second game. Uh, but once again, surely it's got to be Amit Rapai and the on that service return, who's got to look for that one. Yeah, but she's been covering um, over her head and over her left shoulder uh, really well. So, uh, of course, the, the good idea for the Indonesians is to put an angle on the service returns because that has worked so well for them. Not only they've uh, got the initiative, sometimes it's been an outright winner like here. to 16. try and uh, oh. get in the uh, normal mixed doubles positions. Mitropai and Juan Pet perfectly happy to play the opposite uh, positions with Mitropai on the back court, as long as they have the initiative. Play. Oh, great net play from Mitropai. 17, 16. All of a sudden. The whole feeling of this match has changed completely. Service over. 17. Oh. 
And they leveled uh, the second part of the first game with um, Pando and uh, Ahmad split it 10-10 after the interval. on a run of four straight points. Oh. Yeah, good placement of the smash. 18, 20. to the quarter-final once more. Now with his new partner, Winnie Kandau, and how well she's played throughout these last two days. Best one by Tantoui, Ahmad, Winnie, Ostakina, The fans delight in the Indonesian victory. 18. And what a lovely way to celebrate your 32nd birthday. Good return of serve. Yeah, you're right, Steen. Once again, Amma Trapai was looking for the push down her partner's backhand side, her backhand side, and therefore they were exposed for the return of serve down the forehand. That's a great spot by you, Steen. But as far as the Indonesians are concerned, they will be absolutely delighted with that. And tomorrow in the quarter-final, they'll play against the beaten finalists from last year, the number five seeds, Champing Soon and Go Li Ying. Because today, uh, they have beaten Puang Puapet and Avatrapai. 21-14, 21-18 in 34 minutes.
So welcome back to Estora Stadium.